Hi there, I'm Michelle Singh, and I want to welcome you to the Restful Teacher Challenge. Now, I created this challenge because I have been on the other side of burnout. I have been on the other side of dread. I have been on the other side of drained, okay? And I know what it feels like to be completely overwhelmed and stressed. I know that feeling of being pulled in thousands of different directions. And I know what it feels like when everything is all too much and my brain and physical body and spiritual being is at capacity. So I hope that you're able to gain practical insights from our guest speakers and fellow educators and professionals who will be sharing with you on this challenge. So thank you for joining the challenge and let's meet our special guest speaker for today. Welcome to the Restful Teacher Challenge. Uh, for today's episode, I have the pleasure of introducing you to uh, Dr. Jewel White Williams. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Jewel is a health professional and educator. And I would love for you, Dr. Jewel, to tell us a bit about who you are and the important work that you do, both personally and professionally. Thank you once again, Michelle. And I appreciate you inviting me to the Restful Teacher. Um, having to learn so much about Restful Teacher, I didn't realize I had many of the practices. And for me to give some information and to share the information about who I am and how it is applicable into my life is going to be exciting. And thank you. I appreciate my it. My pleasure. Um, um, just a touch about who I am. I am a wife a mother, an aunt, a cousin, and a caregiver. And I say that I'm all of those because I have had to focus on all of them in my adulthood. At the age of 24, I started becoming a caregiver. And I had just finished schooling to be a teacher. And when I was doing my student teaching, many of the students were literally two years younger than me because I did start school at 17, um, my bachelor's. So I was like, okay, I've got to stop real quick. I got to do something different. So I went into the field of science for a little bit into healthcare and I was loving every minute of it, but I felt a little guilty because my grandmother, my mother and my dad and everybody just pitching the family pitching because they wanted me to have a successful education and acquire it at HBCU. So I was thrilled about it. However, when I got into my latter part of my twenties, I went back into education and I began teaching and and I realized that I had a gift for teaching. I enjoyed it. Um, it got to the point where they were just throwing kids in my classroom all the time. I was in a suburb, but however, we received a lot of the students from DC that would come over to our area because it literally was on the border, the school that I was at. So I just enjoyed that part of teaching. I enjoyed being around people, but I was still caregiving for some other family members in the process. And during my journey of teaching, I realized that there needed to be some time for me. And I didn't realize the importance of that until much later when I became a principal. And it was literally pretty much the last two years of being a principal that I realized the impact that education can have on our health and our wellness. And that's one of the reasons why I was extremely excited that you asked me about the Restful Teacher, because I leverage the spiritual connection part of the Restful Teacher. So I am currently an EMS worker. I'm an emergency medical technician. I also am considered a primary uh, care technician, which is like a, a community EMT, like a community paramedic person, except for my EMT for it. I am a BLS instructor, basic life support instructor for American Heart Association. Um, I am allowed to say that. And then um, <laughs> on top of that, um, I do a lot of volunteering in the community. And I'm talking about not just my county, but within various counties in my surrounding area where I work with the community in regards to health. So I enjoy that. And I'm also doing a touch of uh, mentoring for people who are trying to achieve their dissertation because that really and truly made me think about life. <laughs> oh, listen, I am, I'm, I don't know if you know, but I'm there. I, am, I know you are. <laughs> I'm writing the proposal. So I am there. So yeah, it does have you rethink like, why am I doing this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, being a doctoral student is fine, but becoming a candidate, yeah. that's when it really hits you. And that's when you really have to make those life decisions. You do. You feel, I, I know for me, it feels more alone when you become the candidate as you're Ooh. writing it. And I talk about that to the people who I mentor. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm like, yes. it's okay. You are not alone, but yes. you know, there's that's so many resources life. that go along with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. goodness. Well, you said um, two things that you said that stood out was, you know, education's impact on our health and our wellness. Yes. I've never heard it put like that before, but mm -hmm. it is absolutely 110% correct because the the education system, uh, what we are expected to do as educators impacts us causing burnout, causing other health effects that happen to us later in life because mm -hmm. of the poor practices that we put in place because we're trying to live up to the standard of being the, the the best teacher we can for our students while neglecting ourselves, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So- um, one of the things that I have learned in the process that I don't, I haven't done a study on it and I would love to, if someone wants to come and work with me and they can work with a school that has an IRB, that's fine. Um, there are multiple things that make me think about why uh, acquiring the knowledge of being a restful teacher is important. Number one, as a teacher, you work late hours because you're grading papers or you're working late hours because you're you're helping out with a club. You get home late and sometimes you don't feel like cooking. And if you cook something, it's normally fried because it's quicker or you get something on the go, which is still not good. So you're talking about the nutrition part of who you are. You're talking about the physical aspect of who you are. Oftentimes we cannot get to the restroom so that plays a huge impact on our kidneys, our bladder. Um, mm-hmm. It plays an impact on toxicity. Um, and then we deal with our, that's the physical part. Even though you are teaching, you're still standing on mo- nine to the 10, a concrete floor of some sort. So that affects your spine. Um, and then I'm so sorry, Michelle, I'm just telling all. <laughs> go, go. Like, uh, this is great because we don't think we're not, you know, we're not focused on the health, the specifics and the health that you know because of your expertise. And that's why I wanted you to be part of this because I know you have that that science health background. Yeah. I mean, you're calling things out that I didn't even think about when I was in the classroom, the kidneys, the, the impact on the kidneys and the spine and and yeah. the, the the skipping lunch and skipping meals yeah. because we don't, you know, like what, talk, talk so to the us imp- about so the, the impact. impact of, yeah, because there's a huge impact on that. And I'm just talking about the physical part. I have not talked about the neurological part that it can happen with it either. either. So there's a neurological part that can actually occur with it if you're not taking care of yourself. And I mean, like really exercising and doing stuff. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, even though I do have a doctorate in health science and I did focus on the clinician side of it as well as the educator side that um, I'm still in the process of learning. And that's one thing that I found out from my strengths. It's called Strengths 2.0. Um, I took it and I found out I am a learner. And that's the reason why I continue to find things out um, that we don't drink enough water and many of us have that big container sitting at our desk, but we never really get to it. Now, if you do get to it, do you get to the bathroom to go to it? Um, And then the impact that you take mentally, because you're dealing with students, we're dealing with the parents, you're dealing with the community, and you're dealing with the administration that you're with. And it depends on who is with you during that cycle. And I say that because you encounter sometimes some extremely positive people, people who are being empathetic about your situation. Some are able to be sympathetic about your situation, but you also have people who are apathetic because they are trying to consider um, what's good for the school as opposed to how can I best ensure that I have a good faculty that is going to be viable from the beginning to the end. And so um, the mental health can be like an, a quick, say, instead of giving your faculty, some of you people are like, how'd you do this? You can talk to any of my faculty that I had. Uh, I realized that giving them their professional development information in August before school started for the entire year, mm-hmm. then that means that I gave them that opportunity to schedule their doctor's appointments. And I told them this, that gave them the opportunity to schedule their physician's appointments. Mm-hmm. And I was big on and telling them, be sure to get your mammograms, be sure to get your dental appointments, be sure to get your ENT appointments. If you need to see specialists such as cardiologists or endocrinologists, be sure to schedule those in. I gave you your schedule ahead of time. And I understand that things come up I do, but at least if you want to schedule them or take time off, you know exactly where things are. And those are some of the things that you need to think about. But with you dealing with the mind part, and that's where the spiritual level is, that's the other part that I would love to talk about. We're going to talk about that, but I want to pause for a second because your knowledge of health as a principal benefited your students because you were able to think ahead and and do those things, put those things in place to, to remind your teachers to put their health, make their health a priority. But that's not the case for majority of folks in education, right? Mm -mm. With what can a teacher do when they don't have people in place who are that empathetic towards or even knowledgeable towards the the, the health risks? Um, What can the teacher do? What would you recommend a teacher do to start to think about their health in the way that you are thinking about your own teacher's health when they don't have the leaders to remind them? Yeah, and 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 it's not even that that they want to remind them. Um, there are different pressures, different things that are going on in the school system. Uh, there are changes in the school system collectively. Um, there are many initiatives that are being placed in to the education system. So I understand that everyone may not have that same type of philosophy. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I got my hand slapped a couple times. I'm not gonna lie to you, yeah. but um, I did that because they were like, "Well, you let this teacher off," such so as I said, "Yes." Because I knew that they needed that time to to get something straight so I could keep them for the rest of the year. Mm. My hope was hoping to keep them for the rest of the year. So my advice would be is as a teacher, and I didn't think of it as such, as a teacher, and I can even say even as a principal, administrator, um, and I wasn't good about it until the last two years. Mm. But I was good about my checkups, but but I would cancel them. <laughs> yeah, then reschedule them. That's still not good. Mm-hmm. Try to look at uh, so many people, so many teachers try to get as many doctor's appointments and dental appointments and eye appointments all during the summer. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice. And at least you have it. But if you remember with the insurance, it, it tends to start to bleed into the actual school year. So if you take a cognizant part of your life and you kind of make your own list of who you need to see, 
then schedule it out in, a, in advance and put your leave in early. Mm. One thing that I did realize toward the end is try not to have the afternoon appointments because if something comes up, who's to say you'll be able to leave? Mm. So try to schedule your appointments in the morning if you can. And I know a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, why would you tell them that? Because I care about people's health. All right. And I encourage my, I said, if you can get in the morning, that's great. Some of them like, well, I can stay until like one o'clock because my appointment's at two o'clock and it's around the corner. I said, that's up to you, but you'll still be uh, charged for your PTO or your leave would be still for half a day because of the way that the day worked. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, oh, okay, I understand. And if we couldn't find coverage, we I still found ways to find coverage for my teachers to ensure that they were able to meet the needs of themselves. Because they have, especially if you have family, things are going to come up. And so I had to be... Um, I didn't want to be apathetic toward them. I wanted to be empathetic. And if, and I also was very cognizant of who abused the process though. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, yeah. you always got that one out there who wants to abuse the process. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I would just say, try to schedule as much as you can ahead of time. If you can't get them during the summer, go ahead and get it during the summer. I know a lot of physicians, a lot of dentists have Fridays off and a lot of uh, medical professionals take at least a week to two weeks off in July and August. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to get those appointments in during that time. So that's why I said, if you have to do it during the year, schedule it in advance, put your leave in advance. And that principal or whoever it is, that administrator should be able to give you approval sooner than later, you know, and so that way you have it on the books. And also, I, I know something that comes up for me with my appointments, because you're absolutely right. All of my annual checkups were during the summer, because as a classroom teacher, that was when I did it. And yeah. so, you know, you'll call to make an appointment when you remember, OK, it's May and I know that I'm supposed to go in June, but they don't have any appointments available because they're completely booked till August, September. Yes. So you want to try and get your, your um, appointments in earlier so that you're able to stay within your year because you don't want to get a mammogram too late. You don't want to get your annual exam too late. You know? One other thing I want to say is that I, and I hear we, we as teachers think sometimes a little harder than we should. And we are like, well, I've got holiday. My holidays are the winter break. I've got the spring break. And then you start booking all these appointments and we come back to tired because you decided to run all your appointments during your vacation time. Hmm. Um, I thought that was wise. That's not wise. And the only reason why I say that is because that's time they gave to you. Mm, that is you so true. Yeah. You know, they got, they gave you the time. So, and you've earned your time, you know? So why don't you use the time that you've earned because you're working, you earned it. Take the time. Yes. Yes. Oh gosh. That's it, it's truth. It's truth. And it seems simple, but it's not because we, no, but, we don't do that. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to talk about the mindset. So yeah. the mindset well, is one of the things. It. Yeah. The mindset is huge. Um, one thing, a couple of us who are teachers, some of us are no longer in teaching or education anymore, but some of them we were talking and we're like, out of all the people who need counseling are the teachers. Mm. They literally are the nurse, the mom, the dad, not intentionally. We shouldn't, and we shouldn't be. And there are a lot of people who believe this, but we're all of those things because of just the way the education system has folded itself into so if a child is sick, you're going to take care of that child, take them to the nurse, or you're going to have someone get, take the child to the nurse. Or if there's something going on and, and collectively, then you're going to take care of it because we feel like we have, we feel like we're nurturers at all times, but being a nurturer can exhaust you as well. Almost like being an empath and taking on everybody else's concerns. And so you have to consider that. And so you have to rest your mind from other people's worries and concerns at some point. So that's the reason why I said I did it wrong until the last two years of me being in education, that when it's resting time, such as my vacation or my PTO, I mean, you know, that during that holiday time, I needed yeah. to take it because that is the restful time. And that's when it's, hopefully that's where the spiritual part mm -hmm. of being a restful teacher can come in, regardless of whatever your faith or whomever you have as your higher power, it can come in and allow you to gain more clarity mm -hmm. um, of what your purpose is. And how you can use that power, power to allow you to find the gratitude, to find the power within, to give you strength, to find the power to rest your mind. I mean, so good, so good, so good. Purpose, clarity, gratitude. Oh my gosh, you're touching on so many things here that you know we 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 neglect, we put on the back burner, or we don't think that it's important to replenish uh, every single day uh, to be able to do our jobs at our best at at our best capacity, but also as our best selves, right? Yeah. So, so can you talk to us a little bit about what are some of the specific activities or practices that you think, um, based on your experience in education as a leader, as a, a teacher, also in, in health, that teachers can implement to really put those things at the forefront, like the mental aspect of things. And even the nutrition thing that you talked about too, the, the, the lack of awareness and um, focus on nutrition. Um, let's start with how to become more cognizant about what's going on. Um, you gotta know yourself first. 
Okay. You got to understand who you are, what your purpose is and why you're doing the things that you're doing. So what better way to do that is to start journaling. I'm not asking you to journal every day. If you journal once a week, that's better than nothing. And let's say every Friday is going to be my grateful day because I made it to the end of the week. Now, mind you, my day, my, my week is starting today <laughs> because I am in the medical profession and I do weekends up until the beginning of the week, but find your Friday or find your day. And it could be your day of rest because you should have one day of rest where you just sort of decide total bomb and not doing a thing and use that opportunity to write down some things, things that have been on your mind. Because when you don't release that out of your mind, it stays in your body. So writing something down at least once a week will allow you to release your mind of all that stress that you have. And that's what you're trying to release. So do not become a teacher who is on high blood pressure medication. Catch my drift. Um, the other thing that I would say is, for nutrition, try to pack your lunch because a lot of the foods that are out there, and some people say, I'm going to pack a sandwich. Have you looked to see whether or not it has nitrates in it? Do you see what the sodium level is in it? Um, do you see exactly how many calories does it have? What is the fat content? What about the carbohydrates that are in it? Consider whatever you have that you fix for yourself is well balanced. Okay. Some people can have salt all day long, which is fine, but doesn't mean you need to have salt all day long because you don't want to be hyper, you know, in the salt area. Okay. Um, so, so ultimately you want to make sure you balance whatever you pack. Try to have a protein, some fruit to snack on, some vegetables to snack on. And if you buy something from the cafeteria, just be cognizant about what you get. You know, if they give you a lot of cheese, scrape some of the cheese off. If they have, most of them have cucumbers on it, um, lettuce, tomato, onions. Some of people have um, actual bars that they can get their food off, a salad bar. Um, but whatever you do, consider how you pack it. And then a lot of people, one thing I did see a lot when I was in education, I saw Diet Cokes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Talk that it. is something you need. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> and oh, and I, I can't, I, I shouldn't be saying the actual names, forgive me. And then there's this bottle, it's super green, okay, <laughs> with a stripe on it, okay? It has an M and a D on it. For some reason, they love that, probably because of the caffeine level, mm -hmm. or they have their, um, their coffee because they have to have it in the morning to get them going. All of that is fine, but moderation is one of the things we need to keep up in track. I love a good ginger ale. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. There's nothing like a good cold ginger ale. And I usually I usually don't buy the average one because I usually get the other one that is straight ginger because okay. I like that strong ginger taste. I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, but do it in moderation. You know, I love a good crunch of a chip. Well, what kind of chip can you get? Which one has the less cholesterol in? Which one has the less sodium in it? You know, so look at so looking at the back of it can help. So preparing is one of the things for nutrition. So dealing with the mind, writing it down to get some of the stress away. And the other thing you can think about is exercising. So many people hate going to the gym. So many people will hate going outside and walking because of the sweat, but the sweat does help us because it gets some of those toxins out of who we are. That's the reason why we have to void because we can't keep that in after we drink all day. Mm -hmm. um, getting oh, those toxins yeah. out. So- one thing I would suggest just to start is just get on the floor and stretch. So doing some stretches. What what, do you, what are your thoughts on the like desk stretches and things like that they can do throughout the day? That's highly recommended. You know, stretching at the desk is something you need to do. If one thing I did not do and my doctor told me about it, I was like, I'm in my twenties. I'm not wearing any compression hose. Mm. You know what? That's to help the blood circulate, it puts mm -hmm. pressure on it to keep things going. It helps with the regulation of your blood flow because you don't want it to stay stagnant. So it kind of pressures it and it keeps it kind of moving. Okay. Okay. So if I had listened to him early on, it will prevent, which you do see a lot of teachers with the spider stripes on their legs. Those are very close veins. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to have that because we're standing on concrete. So those are just a couple of things. Oh my. I mean, these are good uh, things I didn't even think about. So the compression hose, um, you know, of course doing the stretching. Cause we, yeah, we, busy people, busy teachers don't have uh, an hour to go to the gym because it really don't take an hour because you got to get your mind right to go. Right. <laughs> you got to go work out for an hour and then you got to come home. So really it's like a two, three hour process. <laughs> so it, it is. Not, it, it is. It's not an hour. <laughs> it so, is. There's just not enough time in the day to do that. We're talking about the average human. Okay. There are right. some teachers, don't get me wrong. Then we have some teachers out there who are athletic. They're doing triathlons. They're in every kind of fitness program. There's sometimes teachers on the outside teaching yoga, teaching Pilates, teaching kickboxing. Trust me, oh, doing sure. rowing. Uh, some of them are doing kayak. I know many of those teachers who are doing many of those things, but I'm talking about the average Joe, the average everyday busy teacher that just has a huge family. And just... Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They just don't have time. So doing those simple stretches, gentle stretching, yeah. desk stretching, 15 in, minutes the morning, of gentle stretching. in the morning, you know, yes. you let out and right before you go to bed or, or, or right before your bed. Yeah. Even like during lunch, going out on the field or outside yeah. on the track, right. Something yeah. like that. Utilize like the resources that are in the school that, that you can to, to, to be able to get that physical, some sort of physical activity. Mm -hmm. I, I love that you said, um, 
sweating is good because it gets rid of the toxins because you know the the, the toxins are in and they need to come out and then you mentioned the journaling you got all of that emotion and that junk that's inside of your head and it needs to come out just like the toxins need to come out. So journaling is a great way to do that. Even yeah. if it's once a week, so I make <laughs> that connection and I'm like, yes, you got to get it out. You got to get the, th the thoughts out, the emotions out, mm -hmm. and you got to get the, the toxins out, the physical yeah. part as well, the physical and the mental and the emotional. Um, yeah. So I, I love all of the, the, you know, just the, the practical things that you're sharing and, and the reasons why, like I can tell you that, I wasn't thinking about these things when I was a teacher in the classroom. I wasn't thinking about, you know, drinking enough water or the fact that I skipped, you know, lunch so many times because I had kids coming in for tutoring or mm -hmm. for meetings or holding, you know, holding my holding it so I didn't have to go to the bathroom because yeah. I couldn't leave the classroom uh, at the time because there wasn't a security guard in the hallway. Or right. Whatever exactly. The reason, exactly. Whatever the reason was. Right. And I, when you mentioned the kidney part, I'm like, man, I didn't think about that stuff because in my 40s now. I am feeling the effects of those things. I got hormone issues. My cortisol levels are abnormal yeah. because of all of the beat up <laughs> that I did to my body. No, back then. And, and, right. So I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to have the young ones catch up. <laughs> it, 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 it affects us as we get older. It really does. It really yeah. does. I mean, it hits you. Not at the time you want it to either. Listen, it doesn't. And and the, even the neurological thing, like I had a neurological um, uh, situation that happened to me out of the blue, the trigeminal neuralgia. I had never heard of that. And I mean, I can just see how things building up, you know, mm -hmm. could have impacted just how things are going, like how my body is reacting and not being yeah. as strong yeah. in my age yeah. as it as it was in the past. Because like I said, I beat myself up or I didn't take care of myself because I was taking care of everybody else. Mm -hmm. Right? My students, yeah. no, my, it's the my truth. family. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want to get to this age and it'd be too late like, you, because <laughs> right. ain't no turning back. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you you're in correction mode right now? <laughs> I'm trying to yes, exactly. <laughs> I am in correction mode now. Y'all are you, you know young enough to be in prevention mode. Right, right. <laughs> so, to prevent these things, here are some things that you can do. So let's yes, let's, yes, yes. Let's talk about. I, I want to talk, touch on the joy part of it because I you mentioned something um, that's super important to know yourself. Yeah. Like you have to know yourself. So you have to know yourself to know your capabilities and to know your capacities and to know what brings you joy. So how do you how do you uh, integrate joy and rest together. I get a lot of joy. You have to find your happy place. I think someone said it. I don't know who said it exactly. And um, I, I'm just going to borrow it because I know someone said, you got to find your happy place. My happy place is music. Mm. Like I used to play the violin, the piano, the snare drum and violin, piano, snare drum. And I'm missing something else. Um, clarinet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You were the whole band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my God, the picture of me hitting all of it at the same time. <laughs> and so, um, and the clarinet is what I played the longest. That's the wild thing. But um, I find joy in music and it's the rhythm for me for music. I have a lot of love for dancing. Um, and I just do it in the house because I don't go to a club too old for that. <laughs> and, um, but if we have like, a, just to get together with friends, we're just having a ball, a blast. And I just love singing to the top of my lungs, whether it makes any sense at all or whether or not I am able to uh, keep it on key. Um, some people say I can't keep on key. Well, there's some days my voice does what it wants to do, but I enjoy music and music produces that joy within me. Mm -hmm. So you have to find that happy place. That one thing that allows you to enjoy what you do. And uh, some people enjoy reading. Some people enjoy being around friends. Some people enjoy traveling. So whatever it is that is your joy, then you need to find that and be able to do it more often than not. Yeah. Um. And 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 with me loving music the way that I love music and my my love for music is a little different. Um. I literally feel it, okay? I really feel it probably because of me having been in so many bands and orchestras at the time that I can actually hear, like if I'm listening to a Christian song, I'm like, oh, do you hear that trumpet in the background? Oh, they're using the snare drum on this one though instead. Oh, they did a trombone here. You know, I can hear the different thing. I can hear each of the sounds that are there. Um, and sometimes I can hear the tonations of the flat versus the sharp, you know? So that's why I said my love of music is a little bit different from some other people. Uh, cause I did take some singing lessons at one point. And so she wanted me to understand how it flowed. And, um, and so that's how I find my joy is listening to music and just being around family and having prayer in my life. Mm -hmm. Prayer is really big. Mm -hmm. Um, my last two years were very strenuous and, um, I was a caregiver at the time and um, there was a lot that was going on. Uh, I lost my mother in 2015 wow. um, and I left in 2019. 
Um, but the last two years, it was something about after my mother's death that I started to hear some of the things that she told me that were important because she was a former teacher and she could see things. And oh. she's like, you got to find your place of joy as well. And so she said, you just keep going, going, going. I know I'm ill. I know you're doing this. I know you're doing that. But you know what? Sometimes we don't listen until it's it, it's at a brink of where you have no choice but to listen and fall on your knees and ask for him to come into your life. That's what I had. I mean, he was already there. Mm -hmm. I had already been in the church. I, I mean, but that wasn't the piece. I'm talking about he needed to present to me my next steps mm. because I didn't have that confident of a mom to talk to as much because she wasn't there. Um, even though I had my my aunt who was her sister and they had similar thought processes, but you have to find your joy. If you don't know your joy, then you need to, that means you need to really and truly take time for yourself and really rest. Because yeah. that means you are working. There's a new term out there. You're working in not a good mode. You're working in a depressed mode. Mm, depressed mode. You're working, and I know it sounds like I'm not depressed. You're working, you're being functionally depressed. Mm -hmm. It's like autopilot. Yeah. You're work, just, you're, you just have, you're, you're completely detached. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no connection at all. You're just, just doing, just doing it just to do it. Mm -hmm. So there's no feeling there. There's no joy there. There's no peace there. No. Do you get it? Yeah, I get it. How many of us as educators are in that autopilot, especially? At the end of the school year around testing time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it comes out in so many different fashions. It could come out mentally, physically. Uh, it could come out just verbiage wise. Um, so you have, that's where I said, you really need to look at yourself. I was speaking to another person through a podcast and she asked me a question. She's like, how, how can teachers really and truly she asked a question. It was something along the lines, how can they really receive help? And some people don't want to. Yeah, it's true. If you go to a counselor, you can use your uh, insurance. Okay. And I'm talking about a cognitive behavioral therapist or a licensed clinical social worker, or you can actually go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Those all are different types of people who work with the mind. And they actually do help you with your body because when you deal with your mind, you heal your body. But there's EAP at work you know, the employee assistance program, yeah. they can help you with that process with insurance. It does go on your insurance and they can pull the record. So if you want to pay for private, that's probably a good thing. However, if you just don't know where to start, psychology today has it. So you can look and see who they tend to work with. Mm -hmm. They, there's so many people out there who actually they're cognitive behavioral therapists for educators, for moms, for entrepreneurs, they're cognitive behavioral therapists for so many different things. So always exercise whatever you can to help you blossom and find your joy. Otherwise you're just working in a depressive state yeah. and it's kind of just, you're just moving. You're a, you are a being, yeah. you want to be, not be a being. Yeah. So, Okay. So much, so much here. We do a lot of professional development. We're required to do it, but we don't do personal development. And you're talking about exercising what resources we're paying for when we pay for our insurance. Yeah. To actually do that personal development that's going to help us heal. Mm -hmm. That's going to help us find ourselves, our joy, know ourselves. And that's going to help that head part that's ultimately going to help the rest of us. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That That's why. Like I said, toward the last two years, I realized that I needed to stop canceling my appointments and rescheduling them. Um, toward the last two years, I realized that when I put my FMLA to help my um, my family out, I could no longer feel guilty about it. I knew it had to be done so yeah. that I could protect myself, protect my job. Okay. Um, and so often we're so concerned about whether we'll keep the job or not. Mm -hmm. um, if we're in the hospital, we can't. Yeah, there you go. That I mean, point blank, period. I and I know we hear this and it's, it, it's very, it, it's, it's morbid, but this has no. happened. If a teacher doesn't make it, they're going to replace him or her just mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And it's They true. will. And it's I, true. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about the next day. They're going to find somebody in that classroom or to take over that classroom. If it happens during that day within minutes. Yeah. So we have to take care of ourselves. We yeah. have to, have to, have to. And we just keep going, 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 going. And sometimes, you know, when I first started teaching, um, and that's another reason why I just didn't go into it because I knew the, the the people who I would be teaching, the students I would be teaching, but to be literally two years younger than me. But even though I was doing my student teaching, my my roommate was like, oh my gosh, you're still on the floor doing this? And what are you doing here? And what are you doing there? 
And I mean, I was just staying up trying to grade all these papers, coming up with lesson plans, trying to make sure that I was meeting the needs of their um, their testing and making sure that was it. And I was hitting each of the curriculum points that were there. Am I meeting this objective? Am I meeting that objective? You know, and um, and I just kept go, 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 go. And then you're a part of all these teams and then you're joining the teams on the outside because the organizations that you belong to, you just go, go, go. Yeah. You know, slow, slow, slow. <laughs> slow, slow, slow. Don't go, go, go. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. Wow. So yeah, there's, I think this conversation was much needed because you touched on the reality, the facts, the, the, the health aspect of what will happen if we don't start putting our, our health first. And you talked mm -hmm. about, you know, practical ways that we can start thinking of the health um, so we could be proactive rather than reactive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so if you had to give one piece of advice to teachers, no matter what age group they are, about cultivating joy through rest, what would it be? Okay, I'm just gonna be real with you. Because of you having the restful teacher, and it is a program that um, was tied to something that you read from Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith. Yes. So I wouldn't say they have to read the whole thing, but I would advise them to find one of the seven that they feel most connected to and work on that restful teacher part. Because if they find that one piece of how to begin to be restful, then they will begin the process of healing. Hmm. So find the one thing that brings you joy. And like for you, it's music. It's that spiritual part, right? Yes. And yes. so what is it that you can do within that realm of rest that yeah. you can do every single day yeah. To bring you joy, to bring you peace, to bring you yes. rest. Yes. Can I leave one thing? Yes, yes, go ahead. There was, um, I have so many now, but <laughs> I had to find one song before I ran into the door. You know what I'm saying? Before I, I used that one song and I pumped myself up to listen to, hmm. to get me in my right mindset. Yes, yes. And some people, and then of course I led myself into prayer thereafter. Okay. Because I wanted to make sure that I was a blessing to whomever I came in the counter with. So find that one routine you can have before you walk in that building. Mm. Even if it's before you leave work, before you leave your home or before you walk into the door of your work. Yeah. Um, if you find yourself rushing, then close the classroom door. Hopefully you're there a little early because you're going to open it up for the kids. But if you're there early, close that door and just sort of create your little piece. But just even if it's five minutes, three to five minutes, to get your mind ready. Yes. That's the start. Yes, 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 yes. Get your mind right. I had a I had a soundtrack that I created with gospel music before I left the school district. And it was my get it was called Get My Mind Right. And I listened to that on the way, because I would take the 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 train to the bus and the train to work on the way there in the elevator until I opened those doors to go into that office. <laughs> No, that's what I'm saying. Yes. It's, I know some people are saying it's like a pump up, but that's okay. It's, it's, it you're, can you're not a playing a game. You're, yeah. you're talking, about, you're not playing with anything. You're not creating anything new. These are things that people do to keep themselves going. And yes. if you realize that after you find that piece, that joy as a teacher, oh, I used to get in trouble for this and please forgive me. If you realize that you find yourself in a position where you finally really get to know your purpose and you realize teaching is not it, leave. Mm. And I just say that because if you feel teaching, if you feel like it, it, it's taking your all to walk through the door, even after you've put various things in place and you feel like it's still a strain, then there's still stress and, and it's not getting any better. Why are you going to keep torturing yourself? You might find yourself in a position to be more impactful in the new role than you ever were in the previous role. And it may be a change of school. It may be a change of position and a level. It may be like some people are like, listen, let me try kindergarten. See if that's my love. Come find out they loved it and they found their joy. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just need to make a shift. Yeah. You may not be a good fit for a fourth grade teacher, you know? Yeah. Ooh, well, so many beautiful things and practical things. And just, I learned a lot from our conversation. So I want to thank you, Dr. Jewel, for spending time with us um, for the Restful Teacher Challenge. We hope you get so much from this conversation and please feel free to share with us how you intend to find that one thing that brings you joy, find your routine uh, from the, the different areas of rest. So thanks again, Dr. Jewel. We appreciate you and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much for participating in the Restful Teacher Challenge. I hope you found our guest speakers' insights inspiring and practical. Take the time to plan and implement your joyful rest daily and tell us about it in the community.